All right, welcome back to the Fantasy Six Pack Podcast. I'm Dave Eddy. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Corporal Eddy. Uh, I'll be joined again by my man Patrick Mikowski. Uh, you can find him on Twitter at uh, Patty Mac 33. Um, so I think we need to get into the most important thing first, Pat. Um, really looks as though your uh, LSU sweater paid off. Yeah, I'm two for two on big games against Bama. I got uh, it, man. How how did yeah. your uh, Bama buddy take it? Uh, he he was all smiles when we got into work that morning. Was he? So he was smiling with all all six teeth. Yeah, all six teeth. He uh, he had my uh, my Monster Energy drink sitting on my desk waiting for me. So it's always happy to collect. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's a good sport, man. We talked football for about fifteen minutes and then got to it. So. Well, good, man. Well, that's good. I'm glad that your uh, your LSU shirt worked out great. I did appreciate the selfie that you sent me. That is in the Spank Bank. Yeah, I figured that's where it was going as yes, soon as sir. I sent it over to you. So I appreciate it. Um, so interesting week ten. Um, not not such a great week for for my lineups personally, but um, I gotta say, Pat, you were spot on with uh, Michael Thomas and Christian Kirk. But God damn, buddy, you were um, you were way, way, way off on Lamar Jackson, Drew Brees, and Mark Ingram. Uh, what do you have to say for yourself? Uh, I may have been off on all three of those guys, but I wasn't anywhere near as far away as you were with your Cooper Cup being the number one receiver and breaking all kinds of records and shit against a crappy Pittsburgh defense. No, the, so, he didn't. I tell you what, Cooper Cup didn't break any records, but goddamn if he didn't break my heart, man. Um, yeah, Cooper, how many zeros were on that stat line? Anyways, uh, did you count them? Well, let's put it this way. I had as many catches as Cooper Cup did, and you had as many yards as he did. So There we go. He can, we go. He can blow me, man, that yeah. motherfucker. But, hey, yeah. um, I did hit big on Kyler Murray. I hit big on Ronald Jones. I hit somewhat big on O.J. Howard. So, I mean, it wasn't for a loss, but Cooper Cup was uh, 100% exposure for me. So so that blew ass. Um, yeah, that stings a little bit. All it does. in all, I think we did pretty decent last week. We had some hits and some misses, which is what's going to happen. So. Yeah, I, if Cooper would have hit for me like I would have expected. It would have been a good week, but oh well. So shit happens. On to week 11, my friend. Um, yeah. So week 11, let's go ahead and let's start off with core plays. So... Uh, what do you got for um, core players uh, for your lineups this week, Pat? So uh, I'm rolling two guys out. I'm, uh, I'm going to do it in every lineup. They've got the two best matchups, I think, this week. Uh, Mike Thomas, again, best receiver in the game, in my opinion, up against one of the worst pass defenses. This is an absolute no-brainer. Uh, you know, more than 11 targets in all but a couple games this year absolutely torched Tampa Bay back in week five uh, for over 180 yards and a couple scores. Uh, Breeze is going to get in the ball. It's going to be another big workload. Could be huge, huge results again. Uh, so I'm going to put, put Mike Thomas in there and uh, I'm going to roll Zeke out. Uh, same thing with Zeke, you know, one of the best running backs in the game going up against what, we are all too familiar with the really shitty Lions rush defense. Um, Going to get it 20 to 25 times. Uh, could result in some some really big yards. Uh, they're at the bottom 10, the Lions are, uh, for defensive rushing yards a game, yards a carry, touchdowns allowed to opposing RBs. Uh, Zeke the Freak this week, man. He's going to go off, especially after a subpar outing last weekend. Dallas wants to get some back involved in that offense. So I'll tell you, man, one thing that's weird about this week is, you know, DF or DFS, huh, DraftKings has really bumped up some some pricing on their guys. So I mean you're looking at ninety nine hundred for for Michael Thomas, nine thousand for Zeke. Aren't are you really confident that you're gonna be able to to build solid lineups, um, putting forty percent of your entire cap into just those two guys? Yeah, I am because there's there's enough guys this week um, that you're going to be able to skimp on a little bit and get some some pretty solid results out of. And uh, I know we got a couple of those guys we're going to be talking about a little bit later on. So 
Yeah, and I, and I agree, man. As I looked into this, um, usually the hardest part of this for me to fill out is the very end, and that's our dart throws. And I've got a whole laundry list of dart yes. throws this week, man. It's crazy. Um, yep. But so, guys that I'm looking at for this week, um, I think the biggest no-brainer by far, I think he's going to be just crazy owned in cash games. Probably, God, he's probably going to be like 80% in cash games. But um, for GPPs, I'm guessing somewhere around 40%. Um, that's Josh Jacobs with a very nice salary of $6,900. Um, sixth most expensive running back on this slate. Um, I mean, he's going to just be money against the Bengals. Um, I, I mean, he's absolutely, absolutely no-brainer at that price. Um, I don't think I need to talk much more about him because uh, everyone and their grandma is going to own him. Uh, the next guy is kind of my favorites uh, each week is the guy who is in because of an injury. So you can get a big workload out of whatever position they are at a really ridiculous price. Uh, so I got Brian Hill. If you don't know who the hell Brian Hill is, I don't blame you. Um, but he is now the starting running yeah, back right. for Atlanta. Uh, I've got him actually projected to be the seventh highest running back this week. He's coming in at a paltry $4,800. Uh, he is going to be crazy high owned. Um, he's going to be in the 100% of my lineup. So... Um, Jacobs and Hill are going to be my running backs in cash and in GPPs. Um, that's very, very unusual. Uh, but I mean, Jacob's ceiling is just crazy high and Hill's price is, is ridiculous. So to get four X on Hill, um, you know, if you were to get 20 points, you're more than getting four X. So, uh, he, he's going to be an easy one. And then a guy that I've been going to, to the well, most of the year on is DJ Moore. He's always low priced. I don't know why he's he's back again at 5,900, but he is. Um, he's my seventh highest projected wide receiver. I don't think I'm going to have him quite at 100% exposure just because his ceiling um, isn't necessarily the highest. Um, so I'm going to have him around 80% or so. Um, what about chalk plays this week that you're fading, Pat? Yeah, so, you know, as mentioned, you know, with the high values that we're going to be paying out for some of these top guys, there's two guys right there, you know, Hill and Moore, um, that, that you can definitely try to skimp on a little bit and, and maybe help you out. But I'm I'm not with you on the Josh Jacobs. Um, you know, Cincinnati, yeah, they're, they're not very good against the rush defense as a whole. But, you know, the last four did weeks. You, did you say a-hole? A-hole, yeah. Okay, just making yeah. sure, buddy. A hole, you know me. I'm all about the butts and the wieners. So, um, so it, it, Cincinnati the last four weeks, man, they've been, you know, about average. Well, against running backs, not not people running the ball. You put Lamar in there two games, and yeah, it, it blows up the average. But against running backs, you know, about 100 yards a game. Uh, touchdown scored three out of the last four games uh, with running backs facing them. So. It, it, you know, it's kind of middle of the road for me. And for us money, you know, I'm looking at guys like Tevin Coleman at 6100 bucks, uh, and Brian Hill, like you mentioned. I think those are better plays that, that you're going to get the same kind of production out of. Uh, so Jacobs is my fade. So you remember last week when you were telling me the same thing about Lamar Jackson and yeah. you were going on about Mark Ingram? And do you remember who was, like, way right? Well, I'm, I'm telling you right now, Josh Jacobs is going to be a beast this week. He's only 6,900. That's really not that much. Um, you know, 4X would be about 28 points. Um, he's going to get right around that mark. Um, I, I'm going to tell you right now, next week you're going to look back at this and, and I'm going to give you so much shit again because you're, gonna, you're, you're, you're wrong on, on that one, man. This is going to be the same as your Lamar Jackson last week. Well, I, I always aim for you to prove me wrong, David. So I'm okay yeah. with being wrong. You know, yeah. That doesn't bother me. Yeah, Josh Jacobs is, is gonna make is gonna make that Cincinnati defense uh, hurt, man. That they're they're so run heavy. That it's gonna it's gonna be a good week for him. Um, I mean, 100 yards is I think almost a guarantee. The difference between how big of a play he is is, you know, does he get in the end zone? And if he does, how many times? Uh, God forbid that guy scores three touchdowns next week. Because uh, if he does, he's he's gonna put up you know 40 points, man. 
Yeah, um, well, if he only gets 100 yards and he scores three times, I mean, there's your 4X. That's your 20. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think he's going to score four times, but 125 and a, and a touchdown is, is easy, I think. Um, uh, granted, that's only 18 and a half points. Right. But, um, yeah, I, I think I think he's in for a big week, man. Um, Chalk guys, that I, what's that? I said, who you got fading out this week? Uh, well, first guy's Amari Cooper. Um, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of, of that Dallas offense this year. I'm a big fan of Amari Cooper this year. I'm just a bigger fan of Darius Slay. So I think Slay is going to not necessarily, like, you know, shut him out, but he's going to shut him down. So $7,700 for Cooper. He's the third most expensive receiver on the slate. And I think that I'm going to have 0% exposure to him uh, because there are so many cheaper and safer options. And then another one, man, this almost hurts to say, but Darren Waller is a guy uh, that hasn't done much lately. He's the the third most expensive receiver um, for the main slate. Absolute smash spot against that Cincinnati defense. Um, but a, I think they're going to run the hell out of the ball because they're probably going to, they're probably going to have a lead and they're going to want to keep it. Um, but more than just game script, uh, it's been four weeks now, four weeks since Waller scored double digit points. Now, granted he had almost 40 in that particular week, but he's still, he's only scored double digit points one time in the last six weeks. So I don't know what's going on with Darren Waller exactly. Um, but I'm going to take my chances um, and I'm going to put that money elsewhere. Uh, he's in at 5,500, which isn't terrible, I suppose, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to spend 5,500 on Waller whenever I don't trust him, uh, even this particular week. So let's move on to pivots. So what do you got for, for pivots for the week, Pat? You know, so we, we've talked about some of the, you know, the great matchups, the favorable matchups this week. And at the wide receiver spot, there's an, a ton. Thomas, Hopkins, Jones, uh, Evans, Godwin, Edelman, Cooper. Uh, the, list, the list just goes on and on and on. And if anybody that pays attention to football was watching last Monday night's game and saw Debo Samuel take over after Sanders got hurt, this dude is at 4000 bucks this week. What a value for this guy. I mean – uh, amazing matchup against a horrible Arizona pass defense. Um, even with Sanders and if Kittle, for some reason, they were both able to make it in the lineup, and I don't think they're going to. No, Kittle, 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 Kittle's already out. Okay, so Kittle was doubtful this morning when I looked, so he's out. And Sanders, from what I've heard, you know, they're talking it's muscle-related, uh, ligament-related in the, you know, in his ribs. He gets hit once, he's out. All of a sudden, Debo turns into a target share that that becomes almost a video game level. It's the only guy, really, that Jimmy G is going to be able to throw to. So uh, uh, north of 10 targets, easy for this guy. Um, And I can't even – he gets in the end zone one time, and and he catches eight balls for 120 yards. Uh, I mean, you're – Shit, what are you, 5X on that? I mean, uh, that's, that's, 20, that's 26, 26 points, so six and a half X. But, I mean, that that's a big game. Um, I mean, I, I'm not saying that it's impossible. Um, I, I think that, that Debo was an absolute, absolute steal this week. Um, I guess my biggest concern, quite frankly, is that, you know, the, the Niners don't live and die by the pass by any means. They, they completely live or die by the run. And I think that Tevin Coleman's gonna gonna get as many carries as, as he can possibly handle. Um, and I, I mean, it gets possible that the game is gonna be you know really close, um, or at least closer than we think. Or hell, maybe they'll find themselves behind even. But um, I, my only concern would be that they, you know, throw the ball 20 times, and then if that's the case, you know, Samuel might only even get you know five or six targets. So. Um, I mean, good play. Four thousand dollars is ridiculous. Um, so I, I mean, I absolutely love the call. Um, I just the only thing that scares me is how much they're going to run the ball potentially, at least. Um, I've got a few different pivots here. Um, I mean, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna fade Amari Cooper, then I mean, Michael Gallup kind of has to be a pivot for me. Uh, he's at sixty five hundred, so twelve hundred dollars cheaper. 
Um, I honestly, if I had to put money on it, I would put money that Gallup actually scores more points than Cooper this week anyways. Um, so if I can save 1200 bucks and I can get what I think is going to be a better play anyways, I mean, I, I will take it. Uh, Gallup is going to be against whoever's healthy in the Lions secondary. Uh, Cooper is going to be sitting on Slay. So I think that Gallup has has a higher ceiling in this game anyway. So uh, that that's a very obvious pivot. I, I think he'll probably be fairly highly owned. Um, I like Jared Cook a lot this week. Um, that's a pivot from Michael Thomas. I'm not quite sure that I can find a reason to pay $9,900 for Michael Thomas when if I'm going to do that, um, I would rather just spend another 600 and get McCaffrey. Um, you know, McCaffrey's got a higher floor and he's got a higher ceiling than Thomas does. I know they play different positions, but, you know, my point is if I'm going to spend that much money on somebody, it's going to be McCaffrey. It's not going to be Thomas, even though Thomas is in an absolute smash spot. If I could afford him, if he was $1,000 cheaper, I would own him everywhere. So I'm going to go with a lot of Jared Cook. Um, I'm going to save a ton of money. He's obviously not going to put up half as many points as, as Thomas should, but at 4400 it's a nice little spot to fill in at the tight end spot. There's not a whole lot of uh, great tight end options this week. Um, I guess most weeks there really isn't. Um, but I, I plan on having a very high exposure to uh, Jared Cook. And then the the next one, this is this is a good reason why, you know, lineups change as, as time goes on. So, um, you know, a lot, of time, a lot of times what we talk about on this podcast uh, will change come Saturday or Sunday because of injuries uh, and whatnot. So this is a perfect example um, of an injury being you know, the, the cause of, of a great matchup. And another pivot off of Mike Thomas um, is, is to go Mike Evans. Um, without L- Lattimore playing in the game, uh, there's no reason that Mike Evans won't go crazy. Uh, as a matter of fact, him and Godwin could both go crazy. Mm-hmm. But uh, mm-hmm. at this point in time, I am I'm more on the Mike Evans bandwagon. So I can save 2500 bucks, and I think I get a higher ceiling um, with Evans, actually. Then, then you do with with Thomas. I'm not saying he's going to outscore him, but I think the ceiling's higher and the value's definitely there. He's you know, twenty five hundred dollars less. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna completely fade Mike Thomas. I'm just talking myself into it more and more. Um, I mean, I would take twenty five hundred dollars less from Mike Evans um, all week long, man. So let's go contrarian play. Um, what do you got for contrarian plays for week eleven? Patrick? Uh, so I I really like uh, John Brown this week. Uh, $6,400 uh, versus a middle-of-the-road Miami defense. Um, I just kind of feel like he keeps getting overlooked. Um, there's, there's only 15 receivers in the game that have caught more passes this year. Um, and only two of those guys... Uh, are averaging more yards per catch than Brown. Uh, Brown's at 14, almost 14 and a half yards a catch, and Mike Evans and Julio Jones are the only two guys that are above him. Uh, top 25 in targets a game, top 20 receptions a game, yards a game. Uh, he's got elite speed. Miami hands out big plays down the field on silver platters. Uh, fourth worst in the NFL, uh, 15 yards a catch to wide outs and third worst in the NFL at giving up over a touchdown and a half a game to wide receiver. So I I really like John Brown. Contrary and play, I don't know if most people are thinking the same way I am or not, but I, I know that I'm going to have him um, in a pretty good chunk of my lineups this week because uh, I think the potential for him to, to have a big game is huge. So. I mean, the, the one thing John Brown has going for him is – I don't know why. It's a lot like DJ Moore to me. He is just extremely underrated. And, uh, I mean, I guess the way that I look at it is, you know, I don't see DJ Moore or John Brown ever having a 40-point game, you know, like like some guys can. Mm-hmm. They're, bo- they're both, though, extremely consistent. Um, I mean, those guys are perfect cash lineup guys, um, especially this week. I mean, $6,400 for Brown, that's by far – the highest he's been this year. Um, last week yeah. he was at 6,100. So, I mean, his price is going up. A lot of it probably has to do with that Miami matchup. Um, but, yeah, man, Brown is is basically as consistent as they've came this year. 
Um, I don't know how much I like him for GPPs just because he, he does start to get up there in price. Um, you know, I, 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 again, I would, I would rather pay another thousand dollars and have the upside of Mike Evans, but, um, I mean, John Brown is, is a solid play. So cash games for sure. Um, I don't, I don't know about GPPs just cause I don't, I mean, even getting 25 points out of him, I think is, is tough in that offense. Um, I've got a really good contrarian play this week, I think. Um, and it's hard because, you know, they're obviously a contrarian for a reason because not a lot of people are in on them. Um, and, and this is, this is kind of a high risk, high reward, I think. Um, and I think he's going to be very low owned. Um, I, I could easily see him being under 2%. Um, and that's Carson Wentz. And obviously he's going against the Patriots defense, which, I don't think is quite as good as what we think they are at the moment. I I think that they're easily a a top five defense in the league, but I mean, Baltimore absolutely, you know, showed up against them. And to be honest, I don't think that the, the Eagles offense is, is, is that bad, man. Um, If, if Jordan Howard is out, that's going to hurt a little bit um, because Miles Sanders isn't nearly the runner that he is. But I I really think that this game has potential to be more high scoring than people are giving it credit for. Uh, Obviously, the Patriots, you know, won't have too much trouble scoring against that Eagles defense. But I wouldn't be surprised if if the Eagles don't have too hard of a time keeping up, even if they're playing from behind, which is exactly what you'd want if you got Wentz. But man, at fifty four hundred dollars. Yeah, I mean, hey, I'll give it to you with the value of this guy and this potential. But, I mean, you want to talk about nailing a contrarian play on the head. I mean, I think you're going to be the only person in the country with this dude in your lineup. So we'll I, see. Hope, I, hope, I hope it works out for you, David. But I think you're absolutely batshit crazy taking well, Carson Wentz against a really, really tough, solid, deep New England Patriots defense. I just don't see it happening. So I, I got to tell you, um, I'm going to probably have him about – 10% exposure in my lineups. Um, I'm going to slide them into, you know, that pretty much means I'm going to slide them into about two of my 20 max tournaments um, for, for each one that I play. Um, I, I don't know, man, I'm telling you, if especially I think if Jordan Howard is out, I actually think that raises Wentz value even more because that just gives him more reason to throw the ball. Uh, New England's been a little bit suspect on the run, uh, not so much on the pass. But I, I, I see the Eagles playing from behind. I see Wentz having to throw the ball. If Howard is out, that just means I'm going to play a lot of Miles Sanders as well. Um, so Carson Wentz is going to be my contrarian pick of the week. I'm not saying, you know, I'm going to own a ton of them. But, you know, 10% at least, uh, maybe as high as 15 is what I'm going to go for. I think it's really sneaky, man. All right. Oh, so, it's definitely sneaky. You got that right. No, it is. Well, we'll see. Well, it'll be interesting next week to see how he did. Um, I mean, at that price, if he puts up, you know, 16 points, I would say that that makes him pretty good shape. That would give him 16 points to be about three X. I I think that would be, I think that would be a very reasonable score for him. Um, so we'd be looking at basically if he scored 22 points, he'd be a four X. Yeah. I don't, I don't think that's impossible. No, I don't think it is either. I just, you're, you're, like I said, you, you got hit the contrarian play on the head with that one because he's yeah. just going to be so low owned it's stupid yep and, that, and that's the point of that play so um dart throws like i said i've got a whole shit ton of dart throws this week um we, we've talked about one of them but um l- let me hear what you got to say about dart throws before i run my mouth for a minute yeah just a minute you promise no uh, it'll be about five <laughs> all right well it goes back to this san francisco arizona matchup for me kittles out sanders might not be playing He's a game time decision. We are already talking about Debo uh, being the number one guy there. Uh, so Jimmy G is going to have to have another fifth to shoot in that Arizona barrel. And I'm looking at Kendrick Bourne. Uh, this guy had eight targets last week when Sanders went out without Kittle, and it was the you know it was the Debo and Bourne show. Four catches, 42 yards, one touchdown last week. And he had a couple drops. Um, if he puts up that same kind of stat line at three grand, 
uh, you're looking at almost 5x on your investment of 3000 bucks. So Kendrick Bourne, uh, that's my dart throw this week. Yeah, man. I mean, anytime you've got a guy at three grand that, that you can justify playing, um, you know, it's a dart throw, so you're not going to play a whole lot of them. But, um, you know, if you side him in a few lineups and, and he does hit, um, you know, that that's going to be big. I, I would I would give the same caution to Bourne that I gave about Samwell, um, is that if, if that turns into a super run heavy game, which is possible, uh, that it's, it's going to be tough for him to get points out of that. But I mean, at three grand for a guy who could be the number two receiver um, against a terrible passing defense. I mean, it, it's a high, it's a high risk move, but the reward, like you said, could be real high. Um, God, that guy just gets, let's say he has four catches for four catches for 50 yards and a touch. You've got 15 points, and boom, there's your five X, and that's not that's not a big game at all. No. So, so yeah, I mean, that could pay off really well. It, it's also got a big chance that he puts up a big old Cooper Cup from week 10. Uh, um, I don't know. And gets you, a, gets you a Zippo. Um, but, I mean, it, it's it's a good – I mean, if you're going to throw a dart, that's the kind of dart you're going to throw. So, um, I mean, even, I, I like even uh, the Wilson play that you had from last week, even he had more points than Cooper Cup, and I think Ugh. he only had one catch for zero yards, wasn't it? Something, so. something stupid, yeah. I didn't end up playing much. <laughs> I didn't end up playing much Albert Wilson. Just, like I said, things change as, as the week goes on, um, and, and his play became less and less valuable as other things um, presented themselves. So, um, like I said, it's really weird that I've got so many dart throws this week. I've got four. Um, basically talked about one of them already. But, you know, this is usually the one that I have a hard time coming up with one because I don't usually do dart throws all that often. Um, I really try to build my lineups to be pretty solid all around and not not have anything too risky in it. Um, even guys that I'm going to put out there, 5 or 10% exposure, I like to try to have guys that, that I'm comfortable with. Um, and I actually like three of these four quite a bit. I'll let you guess which one of the three I like the least, but I don't think you'll be able to figure it out. Uh, um, yeah. But but all but I mean all of them I like enough to talk about. So um, first one we talk uh, talk about was Michael Sanders already. So or not Michael uh, Miles Sanders. Um, if Howard is out, he's a guy that I'm going to have to find a way to get into probably half my lineups. Um, so at least fifty percent exposure, um, even if Jordan Howard plays. Um, I've probably got to have him somewhere in the 10 to 20% neighborhood because if that game is higher scoring than it's supposed to be, like I think it will, Miles Sanders has the potential to to have a pretty decent game. So Miles Sanders at 4,100 is one. Next is Russell Gage. So that's a lot like the Brian Hill play. A lot of people go, who the, who the fuck is Russell Gage? Like, you know, like, who, who are we talking about, man? Um, that's the that's the number three receiver in Atlanta. So Sanu is gone. Uh, Hooper is going to be out. So Gage is a very clear third option there. Um, I'm going to have 100% exposure to Hill. But I'm probably going to end up with somewhere near... 50% exposure to Gage just because he's so cheap, man. He's at 3300 bucks, and this is going to be one of those rare times where I, I'm going to do something that doesn't happen often. Um, and that's going to be you know where I've got a high exposure to a running back and a wide receiver from the same team. So um, there's so many guys out there that I like that have you know high values, and I, I want to get my hands on some McCaffrey. I want to get my hands on some Cook. I want to get my hands on some Lamar Jackson. And really the only way that you're going to be able to get two of those three guys in a lineup this week is by having some Hill, having some Gage. Um, and I think that, you know, I think that both of them have a really good shot at putting up points. Um, Gage is a little bit riskier, um, so I'm not going to have quite as much as him. But I'm telling you, Russell Gage, 4X for him would not be hard to do. He only needs 13 points. Five catches for 80 yards, and he's got it. He scores a touchdown. He only needs, you know, a couple catches. I mean, it's not a big deal if he gets a touchdown. So, so Russell Gage, thirty-three hundred bucks. Um, the next one, uh, Traquan Smith. So probably gonna have only very limited amounts of him, but he could have a big week. Um, Five percent exposure probably is the most I'm gonna see. Um, but that should be such a pass-heavy game from New Orleans. 
Uh, Tampa is good against the run. Um, Kamara will probably catch more balls on the backfield than than usual. But after Thomas, uh, then after Cook, I mean, I can see Traquan Smith, even if he has, you know, one big catch, um, that could make a world of difference. He's at 3800 bucks, so he's not a lot. Um, but even, you know, four catches for, you know, 70 yards and a touchdown from him wouldn't be a shocker at all. Someone's got to step up as that number two receiver in, in New Orleans. And playing, you know, playing Tampa, I could see this being the week that, that he could do that. The last so, one. You know, yep. you know, like, uh, what about Ted Ginn? I mean, Ted, Ted it's Ginn. 300 bucks more for Ted Ginn. Ted, Ted Ginn has been really bad. Um, I've, I've been on Ted Ginn a couple of times so far this year. Um, never has it panned out. Um, I, I don't. I don't trust him anymore. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to play Ted Ginn anymore. I mean, T- Ted Ginn has put up double-digit points once this year. That was against Tampa. But he's not had, other than week one, he's had more than two catches one time. And he's had more than five targets since week one, one time. I just, if I'm going to, if I'm going to go on that flyer, I'm, I'm going to take it on Traquan Smith over Ted Ginn. This is, this is what I'm doing, man. The, the last one is one that I, I really tried to talk myself out of because I, I don't want to be a Lions homer, but the more I look into this, the, the more I like it, man. Um, and it kind of scares me how much of my exposure that I'm going to give to Carson Wentz and how much of my exposure I think I'm going to give to Jeff Driscoll. Um, it's 4600 bucks, so he's insanely cheap. Um, probably going to put him in somewhere between 15 and 20% of my lineups. But listen, man, it, it, if he doesn't throw the ball 40 times, I, I'm going to be shocked. And volume from the quarterback position is, is important. Um, you know, I, I see at least 40 attempts coming from him. Um, I've talked about this almost every single week on the, on the last call podcast that, you know, the Lions have absolutely no running game whatsoever. Um, Driscoll, that quarterback, Almost becomes their best running threat. Um, that that's just crazy. Um, Lions do have really good receivers. Obviously, they got Kenny Galladay. He is an elite receiver. Uh, they got Marvin Jones, who can go off on any given week. Probably not going to happen with Driscoll, um, but I mean that's the talent level that he has. And then uh, Hawkinson is you know not a bad tight end option. He, he's he's at least decent. So you know if we're trying to save money across the board. Um, Jeff Driscoll, you can save a ton of money, and yeah. you're not betting on his talent. You're just betting on his volume. Um, uh, I remember last week somebody said that there's one position that I just don't fuck with, and that's I, right. I, it's the quarterback position. I go you're for right. a sure thing. You're right, and and this is this is crazier to me than the <laughs> than the Carson Wentz play. I I do, however, I do like the Hawkinson. Uh, mentioned, I think he's going to have a good game this weekend. So, I mean... And, and don't forget Amendola inside, too. He's going to have to get rid of the ball quick. So, I, hey, once again, man, it more power to you. You're not going to see me playing Jeff, Jeff Driscoll in any of my lineups with your money. So, I, I'm going to. I'm telling you, I'm going to have 15 or 20%. And I don't think that he's that risky just for the fact of if I had to bet money on which quarterback is going to lead the league or lead the week in attempts this week, it would be on Jeff Driscoll. Even if he and, and they should be behind the entire game, he's not going to he's not going to get benched. He's not going to you know he's not going to if, if the game's out of hand in the fourth quarter, he's still going to be in there. Um, I can easily see him putting up 300 yards and a touchdown without you know him needing to have any real drastic you know breaks go his way. Um, the only thing that would concern me is that, you know, for as good as the Lions wide receivers are, the Dallas defense is almost as good against the pass. So, you know, that's kind of the one strength that the Lions do have going as their receivers, and that happens to also be the strength of that defense. And obviously Driscoll is not anyone to write home to, um, you know, so I'm not going to go crazy with him, but it's just such a weird week with how how highly priced some of these guys are that I'm going to definitely have three or four of my 20 max lineups with Driscoll in there. And it's going to be the difference between 
you know, me being able to afford, you know, two or three guys that I absolutely love, but are just really highly priced. Um, so I'll be interested to see exactly how those lineups do turn out um, because I'm pretty much going to go, um, you know, let's say 20% Driscoll. Um, let's say 10% um, Carson Wentz. And that pretty much leaves 70% for Lamar Jackson. So I'm still going to be banking on Lamar Jackson. But I wouldn't be shocked if the Jeff, one of the Jeff Driscoll lineups is, is going to be the one that ends up scoring the most points. I'm telling you, man, if he puts up even 20, if he puts up 25 points, that, that puts me in such great territory with all the money that I save that, you know, if I do hit on a lineup with Dalvin and McCaffrey in it, I mean, that that's, that's going to be the one that goes big. And I can't, I can't imagine Driscoll is going to be crazy owned. I, I think he'll be higher owned than Wentz will be. Um, I can see him being four or five percent owned just because, you know, it's not a secret the amount of volume he's going to have. I don't know. That that's my, that's probably the most thing I'm going to talk about Jeff Driscoll my entire life. So hopefully I don't look like a complete moron next week. <laughs> yeah. Uh, once again, I, I think that that's bad shit crazy, and you're going to be surprised this week once. Once you start building some of these lineups and you get your core three or your core four guys in there, even if they're a little bit pricier uh, of what you're going to be able to afford, I think, uh, at the quarterback position. And and I don't think you'll need to go after Driscoll. Well, um, just my personal opinion. But you should know me well enough to know that I have I have definitely gone ahead and, and been practicing building lineups a lot. And let me just run you through a lineup real quick um, that I have saved that that has Driscoll in it, okay? And okay. So, and I think that this lineup is amazing. I mean, think about the guys that we just talked about, and I I just want to run you through this lineup real quick and tell me what you think. Now, there's two plays in here that you're going to shake your head at, but I've done it with success before. And then there's one in here that I'm going to have to wash my mouth out with soap after I tell you who I've got in one of these spots. I'll save him for last, okay? So so I've actually, so I've got Jeff Driscoll at quarterback, okay? Yep. So that allows me to have um, running backs um, Dalvin Cook and Christian McCaffrey. Um, so my wide receivers, I got Russell Gage in there. We talked about him, so I'm saving lots of money there. Um, I've got D.D. Westbrook. I think that Nick Foles coming back, D.D. Westbrook's value is going to go crazy. Uh, D.D. Westbrook has gotten double-digit points in one, two, three, four, five, six of his eight games this year. Um, so he, he's got a he's got a nice matchup this week. Um, now here's where we get a little crazy, okay? So I don't have Brian Hill in here just because I didn't need the extra money um, because I saved it with Gage, I saved it with Driscoll. And I saved it at defense. So every now and again, especially in GPPs, um, it, it works out pretty nicely because defenses can have a huge variance. It works out nicely to have the lowest price defense in there. And the lowest price defense this week is Arizona, who is absolutely terrible, um, but they're playing San Francisco. I don't consider San Francisco a, a really, you know, high volume offense. So... It doesn't scare me to pay, to pay only fifteen hundred dollars for them, um, and, and to run them out there because it allows me to get Cook and Jacobs and McCaffrey and yeah. DJ Moore. Um, so I really like that. The part that hurts is I have Eric Ebron in there at tight end. Um, now, oh, Ebron, boy, I know, yeah. man, he's a son of a death. If anything, everyone will put up like thirty points, and then Ebron will have like eight drops. And he'll be the he'll be the reason that my lineup sucks, um, but I got Ebron in there too. Um, Ty is going to be out uh, right now. Um, Jack Doyle is is looking questionable. Um, Brissett is going to be back this week, so it, it could set up really nicely um, for Ebron to have a decent week. So so that's just an example of a lineup that you can build by saving so much money at quarterback. And like I said. 40 attempts at least, um, you know, he could easily put up, you know, 20, 20 plus points. I get Cook, I get Jacobs, and I get McCaffrey. Three running backs that should absolutely smash this week. So, I mean, don't don't knock the Driscoll play until you've tried it, my friend. Yeah, I, 
I hear what you're saying, man. I, I definitely do. You know, I'm sitting here building the lineup really quick while you're talking. Um, and, and here, this is what I just put together based on what we talked about. And, and here's some of the names that, you know, we've been throwing around. Ezekiel Elliott, Josh Jacobs, two running backs. I got Debo Samuel. I got Michael Thomas. And I got Russell Gage at wide receiver. TJ Hawkinson at tight end. Brian Hill is my flex. Same thing with the defense. I went Arizona because now I can start Drew Brees at quarterback. Yeah. I mean, that Arizona play is going to be sneaky. Um, I'm probably going to only build that Arizona lineup into a lineup where I'm getting a little bit nuts at quarterback. So, um, you know, in my Wentz and in my Driscoll lineups, since I'm pretty much making that play to save money, I'll probably just double down on the Arizona defense. And if you get shit, man, if you get five or six points out of that defense, you're 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 pretty happy about that. Well, um, yeah, I mean, six points, you're four x. Yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah. So. And you save so much money there in such a volatile position. Just it's like the third third time I think this year that I would consider that the lowest price defense, um, just because they're not facing a crazy offense. That defense is terrible, but. Shit, man, if they just got a defensive touchdown, if they pick up a fumble and take it back for a touchdown, you're, you're set. Yep. That's all you need. A um, couple of sacks, you know. I mean, it's it's, it's an interesting – it's interesting that, that we haven't talked about before. Um, I haven't talked about it um, in previous weeks, and obviously we've only been together for, for this one and the last one. But um, playing a, a cheap defense like that can really, really get you a bunch of money too. So – um any any closing thoughts on this week pat uh the only other thing i got is talking defense is the 49ers defense uh yeah they're the most expensive at four grand this week but uh and kyler murray's coming off a great week last week as you predicted uh but we're talking about a rookie quarterback uh 49ers d second in the nfl opposing quarterbacks completion percentage Yards attempt, they've only given up eight passing touchdowns this year through nine games. Mm -hmm. Murray's been sacked 31 times this year, which is the third highest in the NFL. And the 49ers are second in the NFL with 35 sacks. So he's going to get a ton of pressure up the middle from the 49ers, D. And sure, you know, what that equals, it's turnover time. So uh, I'm going to be rolling the 49ers out heavy this week uh, because I think it's an affordable play at four grand. So Sure. No, I can see that. Um, I mean, if anything, I think I've kind of learned throughout the year here that defense is really, I mean, there, there's so many weeks where I, I've been so in on a particular defense, and, and they've been in the upper third price-wise, and it really hasn't paid off yet. Um, it, it always seems as though that defense ends up disappointing. So I, I'm excited this week to to see what happens. Um and, you know, talk next week about, you know, some of these things we've talked about. So I'm really interested to see how, you know, how Driscoll did, how Russell Gage did. Um, if Howard is out, um, how did Michael, how did Miles Sanders do? Um, how Carson Wentz do, you know? Um, now obviously, those aren't the guys that are going to win you the most money. It's going to be your core plays. So in your case, if Zeke and, and Mike Thomas go crazy, then you're in good shape as long as, you know, your, your cheap guys, your gauges and your hills, um, you know, pan out as well. For me, it's going to be Jacobs, Hill, and more. That, that's going to be a lot of what determines how good we do. It's not going to be so much the Jeff Driscolls. It's going to be the Josh Jacobs and the Ezekiel Elliott's that, that are yeah. going to do it for you. Another guy, too, that I don't think we mentioned uh, playing next to DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel, um, another kind of sneaky Sneaky guy. I think he's, I want to say he's five or 600 less than more. Uh, yeah, so probably. you got to save a couple hundred bucks um, instead of playing more. Uh, Curtis Samuel hasn't had less than six targets in a game since week one. Um, he's extremely consistent, very productive number two out in Carolina. Um, and uh, I, I think he's going to, he's going to be at least a three X guy probably this week. So. Yep, I, I, I just like DJ Moore so much, and I refuse to play both of them, that, you know, DJ Moore is going to be my pick. But if, if somebody went Samuel, um, I mean, it's not terrible. I, I don't think that the it's the same value, but I, I can see it, man. 
So, all right, let, let's put a wrap on this bad boy. Um, like I said, this will be an interesting one this week. So, really look forward to seeing how the games play out. And hopefully, um, I've got some some room to talk some mad shit next week. Because uh, otherwise, I might have to just accidentally mute your microphone um, during your you know your little opening spill. But would, would hate to have that happen, bud. Yeah, well, considering the trouble that you went through to get your shit working today, I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about, Pat. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys well hey uh good luck to you pat this week um you too buddy su- super good luck to myself and uh hope everyone else has a good uh week as well guys we will catch you again bye Wait, bye